In this video, we're going to start talking about how to solve trigonometric equations. So here's example one. Uh, the equation is sine of theta equals one half, probably one of the uh, most simple types of equations that we can have. Uh, in part A, we have to solve this equation in this interval, zero to two pi. And part B, find the general solutions. So we'll talk about what this means when we get to that part. Uh, but for now, solve in this interval, zero to two pi. So uh, in inequality notation, what this means is that the value or values of theta that we're going to get in this interval, uh, they're going to be 0 is less than or equal to theta is less than 2 pi. Okay, so theta is between 0 and 2 pi and could be equal to 0, but has to be strictly less than 2 pi. Okay, so that's what that means in interval notation. Um, now, uh, here is sine of theta equals 1 half. So you might be tempted to say, okay, let's take the inverse sine of both sides, and then we'll have theta equals the inverse sine of 1 half. Uh, which we might remember from inverse trig is pi over 6. And pi over 6 is a correct answer, but it's not the entire answer. So we have to be very careful with this. Um, so even though this is one of the most simple types of equations we could have, it's also a little bit tricky in that we have to be careful because if we do what we're tempted to do, uh, we're going to miss some answers here. So what we want to do then is think about the unit circle. So if we uh, draw a little unit circle over here, x-axis, y-axis, unit circle. So remember, uh, sine of theta equals 1 half. Uh, now, where is sine of theta positive? Sine of theta is positive if theta is in quadrant 1 or in quadrant 2. So sine of theta equals 1 half. There's some value of theta up here. Okay, there's some value of theta that gives us that over here. So here's one angle theta that gives us that. And that's actually the one we found by doing the inverse sine. Okay, that's, uh, this is actually pi over 6 right here. But we know there's another one over here in quadrant 2. Okay, and the inverse sine did not give us that one. So um, sine of theta equals 1 half. This equation actually has two solutions in the interval 0 to 2 pi. So remember, here's angle 0. And then if we go all the way around the unit circle, that's going to be 2 pi. So we'll zoom in on this. So here's some angle theta right here that has sine of theta equals 1 half. And we know that that's pi over 6. Okay, We know that from inverse trig and from the unit circle. But there's another one over here. Now, what's this one over here? Well, actually, we also know this from the unit circle. So if you think. Uh, pi over 6, what's the next one over 6? Pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. So right here, 5 pi over 6, uh, we know that sine of 5 pi over 6 is also 1 half. Okay? And 5 pi over 6 is between 0 and 2 pi. Okay? 5 pi over 6 is inside of this interval. So 5 pi over 6 is actually another answer for part A. Remember, for part A, we're solving this equation sine of theta equals 1 half, we're solving that equation in this interval 0 to 2 pi. Okay? And remember, if we just do the inverse sine, which we might be tempted to do just by looking at that, uh, that's going to give us only one of the right answers. But then we have to think about, OK, the unit circle and uh, symmetry and all that. So uh, how does symmetry come into play? Well, remember, if you have an angle theta uh, where the terminal side hits the unit circle, so here's our angle theta, here's the terminal side, and it hits the unit circle right here, remember sine of theta is the y-coordinate. Okay, So the y-coordinate of this point and the y-coordinate of this point are exactly the same. So there's that symmetry there. So we talked about that when we talked about tips and tricks for remembering the unit circle. So we know that this is uh, an angle pi over 6. And the next special angle over 6 is 5 pi over 6 here. Okay, So pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 are the only two answers for part A. So let's zoom back out a bit. Okay, so solve in the interval 0 to 2 pi. So the answers uh, for part A are theta equals pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Okay, so that's our answer for part A. And again, we want to be very careful with the inverse trig because the inverse trig uh, is only going to give us one of the right answers, one of the uh, correct answers here. So remember, when you take the inverse sine of something, uh, the value that you get in this case, we got pi over 6. But in general, the value that you get is only going to be in quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. But if you have sine of theta equals 1 half, then your uh, values of theta between 0 and 2 pi are in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Okay, So we're going to miss the 1 in quadrant 2. So that's where we have to go back to the unit circle and think about that. Okay, okay. So for part B, part B is actually pretty uh, simple and straightforward here. And we're going to do something like this with most or maybe all of the next few examples for these trick equations. But find the general solution. So what does that mean? Well, here we have two specific solutions. And we can actually use these two solutions to uh, get the, uh, all the rest of the solutions of this equation. So sine of theta equals 1 half. 
actually has infinitely many solutions because there are infinitely many values of theta such that the sine of theta is one half. Now there are only two of them in between zero and two pi. Okay, there's only two of these values in this specific interval here, zero to two pi. But uh, if we look at the entire real number line, okay, not just if we don't just restrict ourselves to this interval, if we look at the entire real number line, uh, there are actually infinitely many values of theta such that sine of theta equals one half. And what's nice uh, is because of the, the fact that sine is a periodic function, we can get all of those uh, infinitely many other solutions. We can express them all in terms of these two right here. Okay. So let's uh, make a larger unit circle here. Okay, so here's our pi over six. Okay, here's our pi over six right here. Now what happens, uh, let's zoom in a little bit on that. Okay, and uh, x-axis, y-axis. Now here's pi over six right here. What happens if we go uh, completely around the unit circle one more time? Okay, that's gonna be pi over six plus two pi. What if we go around one more time? That's gonna be pi over six plus two pi plus another two pi, or in other words, plus two times two pi. Let's say two pi times two. Okay, what if we go around a third time? That's gonna be pi over six plus two pi times three. Okay, a fourth time times four instead. Okay, and so on and so forth. So uh, remember, the sine function is two pi periodic, which means if you take the theta here, and if you add or subtract two pi, you're gonna get the exact same thing. So we know sine of pi over six is one half, sine of five pi over six is one half. Well, if we take pi over six and add two pi to it, uh, however many times we want, we're gonna be at the same uh, angle right here, okay? Or the same terminal side, rather. We're gonna have the same terminal side, which means the sine of the angle is gonna be exactly the same because it hits the unit circle in the same spot. Okay, so we talked a lot about that in earlier videos, but the point here is that if you take pi over six and add any multiple of two pi to it, so two pi times k, where k represents any integer, Okay. If we take pi over six and add two pi to it, k times k is any integer. Uh, so k any integer. Okay. Then that's actually gonna be one, uh, one of the general solutions here. Okay, so take pi over six, add two pi to it as many times as we want. That's what the k represents. That just means go around as many times as we want. Then you're gonna have another uh, specific solution. So this right here is a general solution, one of them. Okay. And by the way, this 2 pi k is uh, commonly just written as 2 k pi. So k and 2, they're both integers, so we like to keep the integers together and put the slap the pi on at the end there. So pi over 6 plus 2 k pi would actually be one of the general solutions. Okay, so for part b, uh, theta equals pi over 6 plus 2 k pi. Okay. Now we can do the exact same thing with 5 pi over 6. Okay, so with 5 pi over 6, that's going to be somewhere over here-ish. So five pi over six will be right about here, five pi over six. And just like with pi over six, we can go around the unit circle one more time. That's five pi over six plus two pi. Go around another time, five pi over six plus two pi times two, uh, two pi times three, two pi times four, and so on and so forth. So the other uh, general solution we have here is gonna be theta equals five pi over six plus two k pi, okay? And we may want, uh, want, we might want to specify that k can be any integer. So k, any integer, out of room, so I'll just abbreviate int for short int. And here k, any integer, okay? So that's our answer for part b, okay? Now you might be thinking, okay, well, we went around uh, counterclockwise in the positive direction. What if we want to go around uh, clockwise in the negative direction? Well, here's pi over six. What if we go in the clockwise, meaning negative direction, that's pi over six minus two pi, then pi over six minus two pi times two, minus two pi times three, minus two pi times four, and so on and so forth. Well, this is actually already captured here, so if k represents a positive integer, we go around this way. If k represents a negative integer, we go around this way. Okay, so this actually uh, gives us all the possible values that we could have. So that's why these are called the general solutions, because if we plug in a specific value of k, uh, we're going to get one of the specific solutions. So here, these two general solutions cover all possible specific solutions. So we know from part A that uh, pi over six and five pi over six are the only two specific solutions, zero to two pi. And we could use these specific solutions and the fact that sine is periodic with period two pi. Okay, so period two pi go all the way around the unit circle. 
um, we could use those facts to get the general solutions here. So it, uh, for the most part, it really is that simple. Just take your specific solutions and then add 2k pi, where k represents any integer. Okay? So we'll be doing that in most or maybe all of the next few examples. And um, that's pretty much it for this example here. So uh, just to recap real quick, solve in this interval 0 to 2 pi, sine of theta is 1 half. And again, we want to be careful with doing the inverse trig stuff because uh, that's only going to give us one of the correct answers. So we have to think about the unit circle to go back to the other one. Okay. Now, uh, what's nice here is the unit circle it ended up working nicely for us because sine of theta equals 1 half. That's actually the 1 half. Remember, that's a nice value uh, that relates to the unit circle. But what if we have something that isn't so nice? Um, like, what if we don't have 1 half here? What if we have something like 0 0.34? Well, we'll talk about that in the next example. Okay. So that's it for example 1 sine of theta equals 1 half, uh, solve in a specific interval and find the general solutions, and here are the answers here again.